Okay, students, in this video, we're going to look at the simplest way to make just an enemy that can chase us. Um, and there are lots of ways to do this and more complicated ways than the way I'm doing, but I'm just going to start with a simple basic way and we can work our way up from there. Now, you may have noticed that I have switched to the third person example map, and uh, that's intentional because it's going to give us some uh, benefits for what I'm going to show you. Um, but this is still the same level uh, from the previous videos with the different blueprints and the ghost and uh, if I hit play I still have health and a score and all of those things. So um, I'm going to make a new folder because it's always a good idea to keep my stuff organized um, and it's inside my blueprints folder that's fine it could be on the outside and I'm gonna call this uh, enemy. Uh, and in this folder I'm going to import uh, a character that I downloaded from Sketchfab. This is a uh, mech drone FBX, and he has his materials, and I'm just going to drag him in. And I'm going to make sure that it's going to grab the local materials. Uh, I want it to create materials, and I also do want it to import animations because he has an animation. Uh, hopefully, it'll set his materials up correct. Uh, okay, it's missing some bones, it's probably okay, we'll see if it loads here. It looks like it missed the materials, so I'm going to drag them in, and I'm going to take a moment and just fix his textures real fast. Okay, I fixed that off camera really quick. I just applied all his materials. So we can see here I have all the materials and I have a skeletal mesh that I can drag in for this drone. And I can use an animation asset that he came with. And if we hit play, we can see I have this like floating, uh, sort of like angry drone robot. But we wanna actually make him do stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete him there. Uh, and I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint, uh, a new blueprint class, and we are going to make a character. Um, and this is because it'll come with basic walk around ability and a number of other stuff that we need. So I'm going to create this character. We're going to call it uh, evil robot uh, underscore BP. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Evil Robot BP. So if we look here in this blueprint, I'm gonna drag it for a second, we can see he comes with a, a capsule component, which is his basic collision, uh, the arrow component, which shows which way is his front, the mesh, and the character movement. So I'm going to change the mesh here to my evil robot drone. Um, and let's see which one I want here. I want this one because I don't want the physics as set. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, and I want him to face the same way as the arrow. So we're going to rotate him to face the arrow is his front. Uh, and I'm going to shrink him down a little bit so he's a little closer to the size of the uh, collision. Uh, and I'm also going to choose to give him an animation asset that he has, which is his animation sequence, which moves him up a bit. So then we'll move him down some more. Now, uh, it's useful here that I have sort of just this repetitive animation. Uh, and it's a flying animation, so this works pretty well. Uh, my flying skull would also work pretty well. If uh, it has an animation blueprint with it, he will do different things depending on what he is doing. Um, and you could build that from existing animations. But for this, it's pretty easy uh, to find instead a character that just has like a repeat animation that you could use. Um, and we have here its character movement. Uh, I'm going to find his walk speed. Here it is, max walk speed. Uh, and I'm going to reduce that a bit just for now. And these are all settings you can play with when he's chasing you as an enemy. I'm going to set his max walk speed to 300 so he's a little slow. Um, and we're going to add one more component. 
And that component is called pawn sensing. And uh, with it selected here, as soon as I compile for the first time, we will see this like huge zone that we have created here. Now this is the hearing and seeing of our pawn. And by default, he has a pretty crazy distance threshold. He has a sight radius of 5,000. Um, he has sound radius, and he has peripheral vision of 90, which means from the way he's looking, he can see 90 to each direction, which is kind of a lot. So I'm going to shrink this to like 45, which is going to give him this forward cone we can see here. So this is where he can see. Um, and there's other ways to play with this. There's all sorts of uh, settings you can change in terms of how his peripheral vision works. But I'm going to stick with this. It's just like a simple cone in front of him. And I'm going to make the sight radius a little smaller. We're going to go to 3,000. So this is what's going to let us have it see the player and chase the player. So uh, from here, I'm going to go to my event graph. So uh, we get to have a new um, event here. And that event uh, is with our pawn. We're going to have on C pawn is our new event, on C pawn. Uh, and so basically, when it sees a pawn, we're going to, as usual here, cast to third person character. Uh, and that is the pawn that we want to be seeing, right? Um, and then what are we going to do? Well, for starters, we can say, um, as this character, we want to use the simple AI move to command, which is a basic default task that you can use for AI. Uh, eventually, we may learn to create our own tasks and to use more complicated ones, but this one makes the this character walk towards a specific point. So I'm going to connect this here. Uh, we want to know what this pawn is. So we want to get a reference to self. So I'm just going to type self, because we are the whole character here, is who we want moving. And then it needs a destination, or it needs a target actor. And we can literally just say, hey, that guy you saw, chase him. So this is our simplest AI. It's going, if it sees the player, it's going to chase the player. Um, and some of you who are like thinking ahead may notice it's going to chase the player forever. And we're going to get back to that in a moment. But um, let's bring our evil robot in here. And if I hit play, uh, we will notice that he's not chasing me. And that's because he doesn't know how to. We have to add an object to our scene that defines for him where he can move. And that object is a volume. And the volume is called nav mesh bounds volume. And it makes this cube. Now, I'm going to take this cube. I'm going to go into a geometry editing mode here. I'm going to drag it out till it goes out of here. I'm going to drag it out till it goes out of here so that it encompasses everywhere in my level that I want him to be able to walk. And it's real important that the actual surface we want him to be able to walk to is enclosed. So I have to pull the bottom down here so that it encloses the floor. And if you're unsure, we have a hotkey that uh, helps us test this. So with that nav mesh bounds volume here, if I press P on the keyboard, uh, I will get this green, it will like think for a moment, you saw it hung there, and it's calculating where the uh, mesh can move. And you'll notice um, that it doesn't go right up against an object, it makes some assumptions about how close an object can get, because it doesn't want it to get stuck. You'll notice it also stops here uh, at the top of the stairs, and that's because my uh, volume here didn't go all the way up. So if I move the volume up a little farther, um, like this, and then we let it think for a minute, it will um, make more navigable space up here. And so it can actually chase me up the platform, potentially. 
So I'm going to press P again to turn that off. And if I hit play um, and walk in front of him, he will begin to chase me. Um, and you'll notice he's turning. And if I run up the stairs, he will actually chase me up the stairs. Now, the pathfinding algorithm here is not the smartest. So you can see as I jump off, he will run back down to me. He doesn't jump off of things. And if I get to a position that he can't get to, uh, he will eventually get confused as it is not navigable for him. Now here he's also lost me and can't see me anymore, so he's stopped chasing. But as soon as I come back out, he will begin chasing again. And of course, he doesn't actually do anything when he gets to me right now, and we can program stuff like that later, but he does at least chase me. Now we're going to add a couple more things here to make this just a little better. Uh, and so we're going to go back in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my begin play here. And I'm going to um, get, I'm going to select my character mesh here. And I'm going to type uh, get world location of the mesh. That's the one I want. And I'm going to right click here and promote this to a variable and drag this off of begin play. Uh, and let's call this new variable home, because when uh, wherever I put him in the level, when I hit play, is going to be his home. And then uh, down here, what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to get some more information. So after we cast the third person character, we're going to. Uh, do a distance. So we're looking specifically for distance vector is this one here. And this compares the uh, straight line distance between two locations in space. So we're going to get two locations in space. The first is going to be the mesh. So I'm just going to drag mesh in here and drag off get world location. So this is where is the robot or enemy currently. And I'm going to put that as v1. And then V2, I'm going to drag out of our cast, because as long as it sees us, it, we have access to us. So I'm going to get world. I'm going to actually get actor location uh, so that it gets the location of my third person character, AKA me. And that's going to be our other point. So this now uh, immediately gives us a distance between how far is the robot to us. So. Uh, in here, I'm going to insert a branch. And if you remember from earlier ones, branches are going to test a condition. So if this condition is true, we're going to move towards uh, the player. But so we want to get a new condition. So I'm going to drag off of here uh, with this float that we now have. Uh, and I'm going to type uh, less than. Uh, so here's a less than symbol. Uh, notice now it turned red because this is going to return a boolean. So this can be our condition. So now this is asking, okay, is the distance greater than or equal or less than zero? So I'm going to choose something a little bigger here. I'm going to go with a thousand. So remember the player is about sixty wide. A hundred is pretty darn close. Um, so a thousand is is far, but not super far. So this is asking, is the distance between the player and the robot less than a thousand and if it is keep chasing that means if we're close keep chasing and if we're not false well we can AI move to and this time uh, also we can keep using the same pawn here so we'll just connect to this guy uh, instead of moving towards the target actor, we want a destination, and that destination is going to be home. So we're going to get home. So go home if the player gets far enough away from you. All right. I'm going to hit compile. We're going to hit play. And now if I move in front of him, he starts chasing me. And if he's slower than me right now, so if I manage to get far enough away from him, he will lose interest and go back home. Now, he does just sort of stay there. So you could have it so that instead he moves in between two points or he spins or any number of things. But this is an absolute basic 
have an enemy, have it chase you. Now, your next steps would be if it's close to you, have it uh, blow up and deal damage or have it teleport away and make a scream noise, any number of those type of things. Uh, you can also give him his own HP variable. Uh, if you're using the um, first person mode, if there's some way to shoot a bullet at him or to damage him with a, a flashlight, that could reduce his HP. And you could have a tick check that checks to see if his HP is below a point. And if it is, again, blow him up or other things like that. Those are your next steps. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here so we can see the completed whole code as well as possible. Uh, and then I'll see you in the next video.